When I say Bajaj, the next thing that comes to your head is Pulsar. For the past 22 years, they have revolutionized the small displacement two-wheeler segment, not only in India, but globally. And the Pulsar lineup has been growing in displacement, but there is no secret to the fact that Bajaj are very proud of the pioneer of it all, the 150cc single-cylinder engine. So when Bajaj launched their P150 Pulsar and didn't get the response they would like, they were very quick to answer back with something that the market would love. And that's this, the N150 Pulsar. Now, that brings more questions to my head. How is it as a bike? How different is it from the P150? And how different is it from the N160? All to find out today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Drivers Up. You're watching Upshift and my name is Bhavni Paswani. Coming straight to the point, how different is it to a P150? Well, there is quite a lot of changes, of course. The aesthetics are there, a little bit more on that later. But let's start from the engine. The best way to explain it is uh, the Pulsar P150's engine has gotten a stage 2 treatment. You're, of course, watching the driver's hub. You've got a reworked exhaust that is underbelly and is right in the middle of the bike for a better center of gravity and uh, the intake also has been reworked for it to get a bit more air into the block so better air in better air out and you've also got a remap now the bike makes 14 and a half ps and 13 and a half newton meters of torque the best thing about this torque is that 90 percent of the peak torque is available from 3500 rpm all the way up to 8500 rpm making the mid-range much more usable now the other difference is the aesthetics let's talk about that the n150 takes a lot of inspiration in terms of design from its elder siblings the n160 and n250 the sporty tank the side flaps that make the bike look extra sporty real and fake vents and this carbon fiber finish on the side panels making the bike look pretty striking but it does not mean it comes out on comfort because you get a single seat with 18% wider pillion seat and 27% more travel from your monoshock suspension in the rear. Now that will not matter as much as the rider strangle. So let's talk about that. Step into the Pulsar N150 and I mean that literally into because the way you sit on this bike is rather upright and square but you get a feeling that you're sitting inside the bike rather than being straddled over it and that is a very involving feeling that gives a lot of confidence to even a newer rider. In terms of weight balance, the front and rear have a perfect 50-50 weight distribution that make the bike very nimble but also super predictable. Looking straight in front, you can get to see the new infinity display that Bajaj has made and it looks very nice with very thin bezels giving it a very premium look. On the move, the rear monoshock does wonders at ironing out bumps. The additional travel does mean that the rear is a bit less settled while pushing it hard, but that's not what the bike is all about. Yes, it's meant to be fun, but it's also meant to be a city dweller, and it does the latter beautifully. The rider's triangle is rather upright and the handlebars are in a neutral spot, letting you relax your shoulders. The tank feels comfy to hug and the foot pegs are just a little ahead of your torso line, which provide a comfortable overall riding position. Talking about the newly developed engine, this humble little 150cc block packs a pretty lively mid-range. As I mentioned before, 90% of its peak torque is available from 3500 rpm to 8500 rpm, which means overtaking in lower gears is just a flick of the wrist away. The new exhaust does sound good on the move, only adding to the experience, and vibrations are only very apparent at the upper end of the red line.
The gearing is also perfect for the city. The tall gearing from its 5-speed gearbox makes it easy to roam around in the city with less shifts while keeping a broad band of torque for you to enjoy in every gear. As for the brakes, the front comes with a 260mm front disc with single channel ABS and drums in the rear. While the front provides for great bite and the ABS system is calibrated rather well, the spongy feedback from the rear drum does stain the braking experience a little bit but overall, braking performance is well covered by the front disc setup. But it would have been great to see a set of rear discs too. But I'm sure that would have made the bike lose out on its competitive pricing. Keeping up with the times, Bajaj have included a charging socket in front of the tank so your devices won't run out of juice as long as you have a phone holder. The last thing that is different to the N160 are the wheels and tyres. The N160 comes with 130 section tyres with 17 inch rims in the rear and 100 section tyres with 17 inch rims at the front, while the N150 gets a skinnier set of tyres. 120 section 17s at the rear and 90 section 17s at the front. The P150, however, had a 110 section rear tyre, which makes the N150 sit right in between the two in terms of rear tyre width. Considering that the Pulsar N150 comes out at just 1.17 lakhs at showroom, I would definitely save those 10,000 rupees that I would buy from an N160 and just pick this up because it's such a nice bike. The frame is very forgiving. The power delivery is really nice for the city and it's very good for a beginner who needs to ride it every day, comfortably. This is a very versatile bike and it's also not something that would scare you but would also bring a lot of excitement to your life. I am very impressed with the fit and finish and the way this bike performs. Kudos Bajaj. Thank you so much for watching. It's been your boy Bhavneet. Do let us know down in the comments below, what would you pick? The N150, would you still go for the N160 or would you save up that little bit more and just pick up an N250? Do let us know down in the comments down below. Please like, subscribe and share this with all your friends. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.